Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on S parameter. Okay, so this video, I'm going to show it to you how can we actually describe the input and output reflection coefficient of a two-port network by S parameter. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part six series discussion on S parameter. So guys, if you're keen to know more about S parameter or Z or Y parameters and maybe also ABCD parameters, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on parameters. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Or if not, I strongly urge you guys to send me your question through the comment. Okay, so this is because I hardly check this email. So guys, if you want to have a faster response, ask me through the comment. Okay, you can also suggest what topics that you guys are keen. Okay, so again, all this, you can send me through the comment. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. So let's cut the discussion by discuss on the input and output impedance. Okay, in a general case of a two-port network, okay, so basically this is a two-port network okay, where S12 is not equal to zero and S21 is not equal to zero. Okay, the input reflection coefficient. Okay, so this will be the input reflection coefficient. They will actually depend on the value of the load. Okay, so which means that this input reflection coefficient will be depend on the value of the load. And vice versa, vice versa here means that this output reflection coefficient will be depend on the source load here. So basically, this is what it means. To derive the input reflection coefficient, okay, so which is here, okay, of the two-port network, okay, so basically, the load okay, will be terminate okay, with this TL over here, as shown it over here, okay, at port 2. Okay, we can start by stating the following power wave relationship at the load. Okay, so from here, you can see that this will be at the port 2 here. So basically, you can see that this will be the incident wave. This will be the refractor wave. This will be the load. So basically, this can be described as the power wave relationship at the load. Okay, again, we can also describe the power wave relationship at the source, which is shown over here. Okay, so this is a very quick recall what we have discussed early on. Okay, so if you want to have more detail, Okay, you can always look at the S parameter part 2 series discussion. Okay, but because later on, I'm going to make use of this equation. So therefore, I like to quickly describe this two-port network to describe by S parameters. So later on, I need this set of equation and I also need this two set of equation which I have discussed on my previous page. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so basically this is a two-port network Okay, so basically, as I mentioned, this will be the incident wave will be described by A1 and A2. Okay, so basically, the refractor wave will be described by B1 and also B2. Okay, so this will be the input reflection coefficient. This will be the output reflection coefficient. This will be the load. This will be the source. Okay, so let's quickly do this equation here. Okay, so this equation, I just copy from this equation. Okay, so this four equation here okay they are actually obtained from this equation which i have described earlier on on the part two series for the two port network and also from here so basically this four set of equation i put it in red and i put it one side here so that i will be using it okay to show how can we actually describe the input reflection coefficient and also the output reflection coefficient with s parameters okay so let me continue so basically, I have this set of equation here. So basically, you can see that I just copy this set of equation over here. And then what happened here is basically this A2, okay, as you can see here, A2 can be described by B2, and this will be the load. And I again replace the A2 with B2 with the load over here. 
So again, from here, I can see that B2 has a common factor. So basically, I move this term over. So hence, it becomes 1 minus S22 and the load over here. So this thing still remain over here. So I need to describe them in terms of B2. Okay, so what happened here is basically, I just move this to the right. And this will be the outcome. Okay, so basically, this will be describing so-called the reflection power wave. Okay, basically from the two-point network as shown over here. Okay, so next. Okay, so basically this will be the input reflection coefficient. Okay, basically will be governed by this equation here. Okay, so all these again, you can again look at this equation here. Okay, so this equation, what I'm going to do is because I know that this input reflection coefficient will be equal to B1 over A1. So if I take this B1 over A1, okay, so this thing I will left as 1, 1, as you can see from here. And this term here, I need to divide by A1. So basically, you can see here, I left S12, A2 divided by A1 here. So in short, I actually divided by this part here by A1 in order to be able to describe them as the input reflection coefficient as shown over here. Okay, so again, next, A2 again, I can replace by B2 and this will be the load over here. As you can see, this A2 here, I just replaced by this term here. So what is my B2 term? Okay, so if you still remember, okay, on my previous slide, okay, basically I have this equation here, okay, which is S21A1 over 1 minus S22 and the load here. Okay, basically you can see I have written this, this will be the B2 here. Okay, so basically the thing will be still the same. Okay, and then I can see that A1A1 A1 I can cancel away. So what I left will be S11 plus S12, S21, and the load 1 minus S22 and the load over here. So basically, this will be the first set of equation here. So again, I can continue. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a common factor. Okay, so over here will be S11. I'm going to make a common factor. So it will be S11 multiplied by this thing here. Okay, as you can see from here, this will be S11 multiplied by this thing here. So therefore, I'm going to have this common factor over here. So this will be the equation that I have shown it to you earlier on over this part here. So I have achieved this. So again, I expand the bracket S11 minus S11 S22 and the load plus S12 S21 and the load here. So basically this will be the equation. And again, okay, I can take the common factor of the load here. And you can see that basically it will be S11 S22 minus S12 S21. Okay, so over here, again, I can simply let this, okay, let's say the delta equals to S11, S22 minus S12 and S21. Okay, so basically you can see over here, okay, I have successfully described the input reflection coefficient, okay, so called with the S parameter over here. And earlier on, I have mentioned that this input reflection coefficient is actually depend on the load, as you can see from here. Okay, so with this, I actually can work also on the output reflection coefficient, they are almost identical. Okay, so this part here is basically what I have showed it to you early on, which is working on the input reflection coefficient. While on the blue this side, okay, is actually working on the output reflection coefficient. If you do a very quick comparison, they are actually identical. Okay, let's say I do not know how this thing can be done. I can redo what I have done for the input reflection coefficient but for now i will be doing as output reflection coefficient okay again this will be the equation that i have written down here so a2 again okay so basically for this case here i will concentrate on a1 so a1 will be equal to b1 and this will be the source as you can see from here okay so basically i have done this okay again from here i can see that i have a common factor of b1 so therefore, I shift this thing to the left. So it becomes 1 minus S11. And this will be the source, okay, which is equal to S12A2 here. So this remain here. So again, okay, I can describe them as B1. Okay, so therefore, B1 will be S12A2 over 1 minus S11. And this will be the source here. So this is what I have found for B1. Earlier on for the input will be B2. Okay, so let me continue. Okay, so basically this will be the describing of the output reflection coefficient, while at the output of the reflection coefficient will be B2 over A2. Okay, so over here again, okay, I will make use of this B2. Okay, I just divide that by A2. 
So therefore, I left this S21, A1 divided by A2. This part, A2 and A2 cancel. Therefore, I have only this S22 left. Okay, so from here, this A1, okay, basically, you can see that it's equal to B1 and the source here. So basically, you can see that this is actually A1. I actually replaced with this equation here. So therefore, I have this equation. And again, early on, I have calculated what is actually B1. Okay, if you still remember what is actually B1 is over here. So it's S12, A2, 1 minus S11 and the source here. So what I need to do is basically I replace this as the B1 term over here. Again, from here, I can see that A2, I can cancel each other. So therefore, what I left over here will be S12, S21, the source over here. 1 minus S11, the source over here, and plus S22. Okay, so basically, you can see that they are actually quite similar. So for the input, okay, they will have this S11. For the output reflection coefficient, I will have the S22 here. While the rest, you can see that they are actually, this S12 and S21, they are the same, but you can see that this will be the so-called the reflection coefficient. Okay, you just need to replace. Okay, since this is at the output, this will be so-called at the input reflection coefficient. And actually for this case here, the output reflection coefficient will be depend on the source as I have illustrated on the first page here. So next, again, all this can be done. Okay, so what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to make a common factor. So basically this part, okay, I need to do S22 multiplied by 1 minus S11 okay, and the source over here. As you can see from here, so basically this is what I illustrate over here. So again from here, okay, I guess you can see how I actually obtain all this equation here. So basically from here you can see that, okay, sorry, I have a typo mistake. This is actually the output reflection coefficient. Okay, so basically I have successfully so-called described the input reflection coefficient and the output reflection coefficient with the S parameters. Okay, with this, I like to end my discussion. Please sub to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.